Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. <clears throat> uh, today's gonna be a, another first for me. This is uh, my first uh, commenter requested integral, and this comes from uh, a gentleman named Johan Doman. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Um, sounds German to me. Anyway, Johan, uh, here's the integral you requested I solve. Um, and to solve it, we're gonna be using this fact. Uh, don't ask me to prove this because I'm not going to do it. Uh, that's, I mean, you can, you can find derivations of that on the internet. Uh, I will admit that I've never seen the derivation of that. So I don't know how to prove this, but we're going to be using it. The, uh, sum of the reciprocals of the fourth powers of the integers is equal to pi to the fourth over 90. Again, I'm not going to be showing where that comes from because I don't know. And that's the truth. Um, but anyway, here we go. All right, so um, this is going to be pretty straightforward as far as, uh, you know, the, the videos that I've been doing lately. Um, let's just go ahead and make the substitution that um, let's let u equal e to the x. All right, and what happens if we do that? Well, that's going to give us the integral. Well, let's see. e to the 0 is 1, and e to the infinity is infinity. Our x would become natural log u, so this is going to be natural log cubed u over u minus 1, and our dx, well, let's see, that's going to be du is going to be equal to e to the x dx, but our e to the x is simply u, so that's du over u is equal to dx. And we'll write that 1 over u is a u to the negative 1. Apologize for that noise. That's a foster puppy and he really wants in here. Okay, so where do we go from here? Um, well, I don't like this interval. Uh, I don't like it because it, I like the interval zero to one. That allows us to break out some nice Taylor series. So let's make, let's bring u to one over u and then change it back to x's. So that's gonna make this a zero. This will stay a 1. This will just become an x. And well, let's see, that's going to be the natural log cubed of 1 over x. What's well, the natural log of, that's negative natural log x cubed. So that's just going to be, that's just going to, we're just going to get a negative sign there. Right? Because natural log 1 over x is negative natural log x. You cube that, and you'll get negative natural log cubed x. All right. So this will become a u to the, or an x to the negative 1. Well, what would our du become? Well, if our, uh, if we're bringing it to 1, if we're bringing u to 1 over u, then this is going to be negative 1 over x squared. Yeah. So we'll get, uh negative one over x squared dx. I hope you're following that. That was kind of a really messy explanation, but you know, it's gonna work. Um, let's put a parentheses around this. This, we'll cancel with that. We'll use one of these x's to cancel this x. We'll distribute this x into here, making this an x and this a one. And we'll switch the bounds and introduce a negative sign. So I think I did all that right. <sighs> yeah, so i is also equal to negative integral 0 to 1 of natural log cubed over 1 minus x dx. And Johan, let's see if from here you can figure out uh, the answer. Uh, just go ahead and pause it and try it from there. Um, okay. 
If you didn't get it, this is, uh, this is how you do it. Um, let's define a function of t equal to negative integral 0 to 1 of x to the t over 1 minus x dx. Okay. Um, well, let's find another way to write that. We know um, that the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n is equal to 1 over 1 minus x for uh, on that interval. Um, and that's why I wanted the bounds 0 to 1, so that we could use this, because that's the interval. All right. Okay, so we can rewrite our f of t like this. Let's rewrite f of t is equal to negative integral 0 to 1. Uh, we'll keep the x to the t as is, and then we'll rewrite the 1 over 1 minus x as this infinite sum right here. Times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. We'll bring that x to the t inside the sum. Oh, and of course I forgot the dx. Um, and then we'll use Fubini's theorem to switch the summation and integration notations. So we yeah, have, this is just going to be the integral from zero to one, and this is negative sum from zero to infinity. Evaluating that integral right here will give us one over n plus t plus one. One over n plus t plus one. Okay. So now we have two different expressions for f of t. All right, well, let's take three derivatives of each of these with respect to t. Um, and I'm not going to do each derivative out. I'm just going to jump right to what it is because it's not that hard. So f triple prime of t is going to be equal to negative integral 0 to 1 of x to the t times the natural log cubed of x over 1 minus x dx. Okay, and from here we can see that our f triple prime evaluated at the point t is equal to 0 is going to give us i, because this will become a 1 and then it will perfectly match i. Okay, so let's write that down. Uh, we'll write it down here. f triple prime evaluated at the point 0 is equal to i. All right, now let's uh, also take three derivatives of this function with respect to t. All right, well, let's ha what happens if we take one derivative? Well, one derivative, well, this will become a squared, and we'll get rid of that negative sign. That's what's gonna happen. Two derivatives. We're gonna get a two out here. We're going to cover a negative sign, and this will become a three. Another derivative will give us, well, we'll switch the sign again. This will become a 6, and this will become a 4. Okay, so our f triple prime of t can also be expressed this way. And we know that our f triple prime at 0 is equal to i. So what is f triple prime evaluated at 0? Well, let's see f triple prime evaluated at 0 is equal to i, which in turn is equal to the sum of this thing where t is equal to 0. So that's going to be 6 times n going from 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 0 plus 1 to the fourth. That's n plus 1 to the fourth. Advancing our index on n by up one and then subtracting one from all the ends inside our sum will give us over n to the fourth. And we know that this sum right here, we stated it, that's equal to pi to the fourth over 90. Um, so six times that is going to give us pi to the fourth 
over 15. And Johan, that's the answer to your integral. Uh, hope you enjoyed that.